Happy Stony Sunday, everyone. This is episode 209 of the Stony Sunday Show. I am your host, Coral, Coral Reefer, Coral Fish. My name is Coral. I love to talk about pot on the internet, so that's what we're going to do today. We're going to smoke some pot as well. I also have my nectar collector here because I've been running around this morning and I need a dab before we like get into this episode. Grabbing my torch. Oh, I thought I was so prepared, but now I really am. Stony Sunday is the question and answer show focused on pot, but the questions come from all of you. So if you have a question you want to submit, you can go to stonysunday.com slash askstonysunday. And this side, Bovida, oh, I should remember it's the side that has the thing. Bovida, Bovida, helps me put on this show. They make the humidity control packets that I keep in every jar of weed. You can kind of see it on the top of that jar right over there. Yep. Um, and they help me provide goodie bags if I have answered your question in a pre-recorded episode. The live ones are just fast and furious. No goodie bags because I answer a bazillion questions and we just go, go, go. And first we dab. <laughs> Stony Sunday, like I said, question and answer. But I also have been wanted to bring in, bring, wanted to bring in more updates just about my life and what's going on. Keep you guys posted. So I did want to just tell you that things are kind of awesome right now. That was definitely what I needed to get the episode going. <coughs> Feeling good. <coughs> Things are awesome. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to go to the 40th anniversary of Quick Trading, which is the business that Ed Rosenthal started. When you're going to start like publishing books and consulting and having an... I don't know, individual sole proprietor type business, you have to have an LLC, you have to have some sort of business name. So Quick Trading is his business name. They didn't necessarily sell a bunch of small merchandise or anything like that, but that's the business that he's been operating under, publishing his books and all of that. <coughs> but it was the 40th anniversary for Quick Trading, as well as the book release party for Beyond Buzz, Ed Rosenthal's latest book. And there was the fundraiser for Green Aid, which is a legalization and educational campaign, something like that. So it was this really huge epic party full of activists and advocates and potheads and business people, lawyers. It was incredible. And the reason I wanted to talk about it right now, randomly, was because I just really wanted to say thank you to everyone that has helped me get to where I am right now. Being in that party was just very surreal for me and I really felt like I didn't belong and like I should just go home and like Google these people and just read about them online because they're all so amazing. And just to be in the same room as them, I was like, this is crazy. But it's because of you guys. It's because you've watched my channel. It's because you've listened to what I've said. You've taken the information, the books I've suggested, the studies I've mentioned, the different people and things that I've talked about and you've made a significant impact on other people. I couldn't do this by myself. I wouldn't be invited to these parties by myself. So I just had this really weird, surreal night last night of extreme gratitude for where I was and the people I was meeting, and then just extreme gratitude for you guys, for the internet. I fucking love you. I'm not great in person. I'm awkward. I would rather go home and just like chill, but I'm just so thankful for the internet. So it was amazing. The Ed Rosenthal party was incredible. Speaking with Dale Sky Jones on like a casual basis, like she's just talking to me, like blew my mind. Debbie Goldsberry blew my mind earlier this year when she just talked to me like totally regular, regular person. And it's like, these two women are such amazing role models of mine. And they have worked so hard. They work so hard. And a lot of what I'm doing is talking about pot. I'm sitting in front of the computer. I'm typing things up. I'm taking pictures. It's so different than running a business or running a campaign and doing that type of activism. So to just meet the people that put in the work that way, it was incredible. It was incredible. It was incredible. So any organization you can get involved with, the earlier the better, do it. Americans for Safe Access. 
normal. There's a thousand organizations and you can even start one wherever you are. Some of the people that I've met helped start these organizations. There was not an organization before they decided to start one. You could be that person where you are. And then later, 30 years from now, there could be someone like me gushing about you and how amazing you were. So anyway, that is my little spiel about how amazing today was, or yesterday was. It's like rolling into today. Um, the party was just incredible. Ed Rosenthal is a kick-ass hero. He's done more than a lot of people, and he has a lot more to do still. It was really nice to see him so motivated and fired up at this party, and it was just awesome. It was awesome. They also mentioned at this party that it was the first time a book is being released for Ed with like sponsors and corporate tie-ins and that type of thing and some people don't like it and some people think it's a bad way you're having advertising with a book but the bottom line that he said was it was publish or perish and they chose to publish so I do I think the same way I feel the same way I do align myself with businesses I do have corporate tie-ins I do have sponsorship of a lot of my events and opportunities and the giveaways that I do but the bottom line is that's how I'm able to continue doing this and that's what I enjoy doing. I never feel like I have to compromise what I want to do for the corporate tie-in or sponsorship and it's just about furthering the voice and the message and it was kind of nice to see him address that that kind of, I don't know, weird dynamic going on. So yeah, life is awesome, work really hard. Also, oh man, I'm going to take a bong hit. But also, this is the first Stony Sunday since Election Day in the United States for our midterm elections. It was kind of messy in some areas, but pot-wise, it was fucking sweet. If you are bummed about Florida, take your head out of your ass and realize how far Florida went in three years, five years, ten years, one year. Florida fucking kicked ass. I don't, I'm sorry that it didn't pass. I am. I understand the frustration, the pain. I just don't think that you guys are never going to get it. I know that you're going to get it eventually and I'm sorry it didn't happen this time, but you guys kicked ass. You got 57, 58% in Florida, a southern state. It's incredible and people are saying that it wasn't a victory. Who fucking cares? Yes, you will have to wait two more years to get the text on the law. That's true. On the books. Text of the law on the books. But Florida, you guys made history. You got a conversation started. You got more people out to the vote for cannabis than for your own fucking governor. I'm all fired up this morning. But yeah, Florida, if you're like crying about it, I understand and I'm not trying to be rude or callous, but I'm just trying to remind you that you guys did so much. You guys got so far. California hasn't even passed legalization and you guys went and jumped to medical in 57%. So fucking close. So close. So I believe in you. I know that you will actually get medical and full legalization. I believe in it for the United States. I just am incredibly proud of how far Florida went in a short amount of time because a couple of years ago, everyone was saying this is never going to happen. Southern states don't care about pot. No one would ever listen. Pharmaceutical companies are so strong. And you guys got over a majority. You didn't get the super majority. That's the reality of it. You got over a majority. That's incredible. Be proud. Be happy about it. Be happy about it. Be super happy. And take your anger or disappointment or excitement, whatever you're feeling, and keep it going. Get back to those groups that we're advocating and organizing for Amendment 2 and ask them, what's next? What do we do? What's the next step? If not now, then 2016. Yeah. There's always another opportunity. And like I said, California doesn't even have legalization. We are still working towards it. And 2016 is looking like when we will get it here. Those are the updates. There's a lot of talking for like not a lot of smoking and question answering yet. But you can always submit your questions. Obviously, you guys probably know, but Washington DC, Oregon, and Alaska did legalize and we are just we're flying by in the United States. Things are happening. We're making progress. California is not quite there, but it's pretty crazy 
to have California look conservative out of fucking nowhere. All of a sudden, we're the ones that are like, oh, we don't have legalization, and all of you other states are starting to have it all around us. We're starting to, yeah, it's a little weird, but whatever. 2016 is going to change shit. 2016 is going to be amazing. Get ready. Be involved. Make sure you're registered. Make sure you're campaigning. Doing all that type thing stuff. So, I am cruising for questions looking through the live stream right now and I was also going to answer the questions from Stony Sunday 200 208 because I didn't really do that last week and I think I said I was gonna actually answer the questions that you guys all answered as well let's do that flip on back here I love my moleskin Stony Sunday 200 is where I pose these questions to all of you. I think like 26 maybe? 26 to 30 people um, actually submitted a video and participated. So I started reading a comment while I was trying to talk. It got very confusing. But yeah, I think just under 30 people submitted a video answering all of the questions. It was amazing. I did announce the winner last week. Congratulations again, Dakota. If Dakota used your comment, I wish I could remember the name of the it starts with an M, I think. If she used your comment in her video that won, your comment got you a prize as well. So if that was your comment, make sure you contact me because I still need that person to contact me. But I asked this series of questions, and the first one was, before I started smoking weed, what did I think about cannabis? You guys excited? These are like some throwback questions if you have watched for a very long time. Before I started smoking cannabis, I used to repeat the phrase that I made bad enough decisions without drugs and alcohol, so I, like, didn't need any extra help. And that's pretty much how I felt about it. I was like, I can't even trust my own judgment. I'm still figuring shit out. I don't know what I'm doing. Why would I, like, confuse myself when I'm already really confused? I don't get it. Once I started to learn more about cannabis and that it doesn't actually assist in making bad decisions and actually can help you make better decisions, in my case, I help, it helps me make better decisions, um... Then I, like, started to be more curious and research cannabis more and have a better understanding about it. But originally, I was just like, it's not, it's not for me. I don't think I need it. I don't think I'm interested. I also picked this rig, by the way, for today's episode because I think it's on sale right now. The whole Aqualab site is on sale. And that's where I got my Ben Wilson. And I know a couple of you watching this have the same rig as me. And if you want to be one of those people, I fucking love it. I think this is the unofficial rig of the World Reefers. I said it there. I said it. Um, but yeah, there is a couple of these in Australia. There is one of these here with me. There are a few of them all over the world. I love it. And they're on sale right now. Aqualab doesn't have that many sales, but they are right now. And it's awesome. <clears throat> Someone said that they like the way I cough because it's distinct. And now I'm going to be self-conscious about that. What is a less distinct way to cough? Is it good? Do I want a distinct cough? Do I want people to hear a cough and be like, that's coral? I don't know. I really don't know. The next question is how do you stay high? Do you prefer blunts or joints? Do you prefer skillet hits or you only take knifers? What about domers? Does anyone call them that? I love bongs! I'm always hitting a bong! This question cracks me up because I get it so often and I always want to be like, I'm hitting a bong in every picture. Like, I don't know how to answer. It's not that I only hit bongs. It's like, what do you reach for most often? A bong. I love it. I love my water pipes. It's my favorite. Even the nectar collector has the water in it, so it's kind of like a bong. But yeah, water pipes, bongs, those are my favorite. That's how I stay high. Even if I'm traveling, I do have a few smaller pieces that are really easy travel rigs. It's not out of the question that I bring a water piece with me and I stay high on the road. I actually just got this dry piece with me. It's a little one-hitter that looks like an ice cream cone. It's fucking adorable. And I've been thinking I'm probably never going to smoke out of it because it's going to smell like pot then around my neck and I don't really want that. It could get gross. 
but it's also so cute. And when I'm on the go and traveling, I'll just bring a little rig or a little bong because that is my favorite. I see a question from John AB7 asking if there is a World Reefers discount at Aqualabs. There's not. It's definitely something that Aqualab and I have communicated with about a few times. We definitely are interested in it, but they just don't offer discounts or year-round discounts very often. It's not something that they have an affiliate program and they've really done before. So we're not like rushing into it. It is something I'd really like to do in the future for you guys. But right now I'm just really trying to let you all know when there is a sale because you can save money if you buy during the sale. Duh. Duh. And this one was $2.50 during regular pricing. So I think with like 10 to 15% off, you're getting a good price. For Ben Wilson Triple Donut, fuck yeah. I dab and I hit flower off this. It's one of the only pieces I have that I honestly love it for both evenly. I love it for both totally evenly. All my other pieces, it's generally one or the other, but this one I really love it for both. Unofficial rig of the World Reapers. He has no idea that I'm saying any of this, by the way. I've never met him or spoken with him, really. <coughs> Was that distinct? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I could not do it. I just coughed as felt natural. Anyway, the next question is, what's your favorite weedy book or magazine? Weedy publication kind of hard to say because in California we have so many there really is a huge selection when you go even just to like the liquor store they might have high times skunk weed world then if you go into a dispensary there might be cannabis culture cannabis now then even smaller just regional ones that aren't even distributed across different states but it's incredible and it's amazing and I really have a soft spot in my heart for cannabis culture magazine I don't think I've talked about them enough at all. I feel really bad mentioning them first because I love all of the diff different publications. And I've probably worked with Cannabis Culture like maybe the least. You know, we haven't really done anything together. But I have this big, big spot in my heart for them because they made activism glamorous in a really subtle way. Like, you're like, what are you talking about? Super dumb. But on the back of their magazine, I wish I had, and I didn't even think about grabbing this ahead, like ahead of time, but in the back of their magazine, they used to have something they called, I think, Hot Shots? Maybe I'm totally wrong about that, but they had Pot Shots. Pot Shots, maybe? I don't know. It was some page where it was photos of pot-related events from that state or that region for that month. And every single month, it's kind of hard to find a bunch of different cannabis events, especially where you are. So they would kind of have to reach sometimes. And they'd go to, like, book signings. And they'd go to different political events, different rallies, or different politicians' like speeches. And every now and then, I would be at these different really boring events that were not glamorous. And they were not like the cannabis cups where you're dressed up and everyone's looking at you and taking a picture. Like, it's very – these are actual educational events. And I'd be there, and cannabis culture would be like, hey, can I get a picture of you? And I'd be like, sweet, take a picture. And they'd put it in the back of their magazine, and I swear there's like four or five, maybe like more magazines where there's no name or anything. They just took the picture. I don't – maybe there is a name. But they just made being at these educational, boring events fun. And they were awesome, and they made it like – in your fashion magazines when they have who's on the red carpet, that's what it looked like to me. It's like who went to the book signing, who went to the politician speech, who got away from the actual cups and got into the community and movement and they published you there and it was everyone. It wasn't just me because I had a blog, it's me because I was there and there were other people that don't have a blog and there are other people that, it was just incredible. So way to go Cannabis Culture, I'm pretty sure they still do that in their magazine. I don't see myself in there anymore, but I'm almost positive they still do it. And then I have to say, I love Cannabis Now. Cannabis Now did feature me. They came to my house and they took photos. Like, in my house, I felt like a movie star. I was like, it was crazy. It was so crazy. But it was really awesome. And I have a whole write-up in Cannabis Now. I love working with them. They've been really kind, really easy to speak to. And they, I feel like they used, like, the words that I said. They quoted me accurately. I like them. Um, and then High Times Skunk. Skunk. High Times is great. I definitely love High Times. I love the events that High Times puts on. They are fun and glamorous in their own right. They're just not very educational. Bottom line. Um, that can always change, though. 
I have I have hope. Um, and then books, I have to say, the pot book. The pot book is amazing. It's edited by Dr. Julie Holland. I'm pretty sure. Let me double check it. Yeah, Holland. Dr. Julie Holland. I'm almost positive. And it has different chapters contributed by different people about different things. Politics, religion, history, health, whatever it's going to be, it's in the pot book. I think they should release a new version because things have changed. Not like a lot with the truth of cannabis, but like there's chapters in there about the state laws and fuck yeah, the state laws have changed so much recently. That was gonna be rough. <coughs> it got like yellow and whew. random question from the live stream. Killa Chase asked if I have named my pieces. I don't. <coughs> 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 into a little ball. Um, I don't name my pieces because at this point I've picked up a few pieces from different artists, so I refer to them by like the artists that they came from, like the beer glass or the anodyne rig, the bent wizard, the rain city glass, I can name them all, the revere, the wicked sands, the health stone. Yeah, I just kind of go by that and then I know what I'm talking about. Plus, I live by myself, so like... Who am I naming them for, really? Am I going to be like, Coil, pass me Marge. I don't know why I name it Marge. That bong hit was awesome. Miss Batty Babe says that she bought the pot book and she's been reading it and she left it in the bathroom. That's probably the perfect place for this book. Totally. Awesome. But she left it in the bathroom and her mom picked it up and started reading some of it. That is what you do. You just leave it in places where they're going to see it. They're going to be like, what is this? And they're going to start cruising it. Perfect plan. <gasps> You're here? Oh, I'm grabbing. This little bugger came to say hi. Hi, Stash. Hi, baby. He went and got some more shots yesterday, so he's going to be a very healthy kitty. Well, he is a healthy kitty, but so he can stay a healthy kitty. And I just want to give you guys an update. He doesn't have to go back to the vet for a whole year. A whole year, buddy. He's so tolerant. I kind of just, like, press my face on him a lot. You deal with that, buddy? He deals with it. Kitty cuddle hour. This is nice. This is the nicest he's ever been, I think. Like, on camera. You okay? Okay. I'll put him down. Night, night, Sash. Man, he must have just woke up, because normally he's, like, a little crazy. <coughs> Blah. I don't know why I'm like hyped out this morning. Is it the Pepsi? Could be the Pepsi. Next question from the old episode, but you can definitely still submit the live questions too. I'm mixing them up. Next question is the tough one that a lot of people, when they were filming their episode 200, they had a bit of trouble answering this and the answers were really awesome because it was funny to see how different people interpreted this information and it made me realize that I probably have a lot of this information wrong too. We probably all interpreted it a little bit differently and I don't think any actual scientists answered the question so I'll do the best that I can too. But... Oh my gosh, I hear Stash doing something. Get down! He jumps on the giveaway center area. I heard it. Sorry, cat emergency. 
That's why he was being good. He was up to He was plotting. He was like, oh, it's going to be so busy. She's filming. I'm going to go where I'm not supposed to go. Busted. Anyway, um, the question is, what is the endocannabinoid system? Oh, man, I wish I could remember who it was that actually said in, it's the endogenous cannabinoid system. Thank you for answering that. I haven't even confirmed that that's, like, what endo stands for, but if that's right, I like that. Endogenous, not I-N, but E-N. Excuse me. Um, but, yeah, the endocannabinoid system is a system in your own body, and you produce cannabino endocannabinoids, which are molecularly identical to what's in cannabis. So there's what's produced in your body and what's produced in cannabis, and they're identical. And everyone's body is producing a different amount and different formula, kind of, of these endocannabinoids. We all have a different mix-up composition of our endocannabinoid system. So some people might not have a lot of receptors, or they might have too many receptors. And they can supplement their endocannabinoid system by smoking weed and by getting outside cannabinoids into their body, supplementing the endocannabinoid system. You have receptors in your organs, your liver, your brain. I think there are some in your nervous system, or your spinal cord, if I remember. I don't know. Everywhere! Endocannabinoid receptors, endocannabinoids being produced. I want to say there are some in your bone marrow, even. Like, some trippy-ass places that you're like, what are you doing in there, endocannabinoids? They're making you better. Endocannabinoid system in your body maintains homeostasis. That's the big buzzword when you look up endocannabinoid system, homeostasis. And what is homeostasis? It is maintaining consistency, not like how something feels consistency, but maintaining the sameness, you know? You want your body temperature to be consistent. You want your blood sugar level to be somewhat consistent. It's going to regulate as you eat. And you want your body to just have a general level of health that is stable and good. Maintaining your endocannabinoid system can help maintain homeostasis in a number of ways that we are still researching and learning about. And it's awesome. So some people may need more cannabinoids because their system is super depleted of them. Other people don't really need that many and maybe that's why they get super fucked up off just a couple of hits and they're like, I can't do this anymore, pot's not for me. We all have different bodies, we all have a different endocannabinoid system, and maybe that's why I can take these super fat dabs and just dab after dab after dab, be ready to smoke more when other people fall asleep and then I'm dabbing by myself and it's like, blah. It's because my endocannabinoid system's all wonky. Stash is still going nuts, by the way, during that whole spiel. I'm eyeballing him, he's looking at shelves, and all sorts of crazy things. Barefoot Stoner asked if Stash Kitty has been drowsier since he was neutered, but I actually got him that way. He came cut up, so I didn't um, neuter him, or have him neutered. He just arrived, not ready to breed. This bowl, like, never ends. It's crazy. Crazy. Okay, here we go. I'm just ashing that bowl. It wasn't ending. It was getting kind of ashy, though. And it is time to pack another. And I'm going to look for maybe a live question or two as well. Scroll a little bit. Scrolling. Scrolling. Danimal loopers? Low peers. Danimal la, la peers. Danimal la peers asked if I ever take time off to help reduce my tolerance. I don't take more than a couple hours, a good night's rest, off from cannabis. And that is not really hurting my tolerance, in my opinion. I think a variety of strains, a variety of methods, and also not smoking just to smoke. I try to know how I'm feeling, and if I wake up in the morning and I don't need to take a fat dab or take a bong hit, then I won't, and I'll just get started with my day, and I'll chill, and maybe it's like seven hours into that day, and I'm like, you know what? Now I'm ready to toke, and I'll light up, but I don't really believe in a absolute style of life. I grew up in a household that was no drugs and no alcohol. They weren't they weren't strict with me. A lot of you, if you already know my history or whatever, you know my parents are super cool, super nice, but they live absolute lifestyles where there's no drugs and no alcohol. And I don't agree with drawing a finite finite 
finite, finite line in the sand like that. I believe every day is new. Just take how you feel each day and yeah, no specific tolerance breaks, but I mean, there are some times during the month when I am fucking gram dabs, let me have them, and other times where I'm like, no, it's cool, I'll pass, I'm good for now. So, it just depends on how you feel, listen to your body, don't just smoke to smoke, or you're gonna just be wasting your pot, whether you're getting high or not, I think it's kind of a waste. So, that's what's that. <sighs> Family Trees Earl asked if I like delivery or brick and mortar style clubs better. Great question. And actually, set the notebook back down. If there was like a Jeopardy daily double, you would have just won the daily double because those reminded me of a two-part thing. Anyway, do I like delivery or brick and mortar better? I love brick and mortar. I love delivery. Brick and, brick and mortar is awesome. You get to walk in. It's a cannabis store. It's a candy shop. It's fantastic. There's all these, it's just, there's a lot to see. Every single club does it differently. So as someone that comes from the hospitality industry, I did seven years as a waitress and I, I loved it so much. It was so much fun. Um, it's really, really interesting and just fascinating to me to see how people have a hospitality style business. You're welcoming guests in. How do you do it? Like what kind of spiels do you have? What kind of specials? I just, I'm interested in it. So Restaurants and dispensaries are a little bit different, but the similarities that they have, I just really like going in and checking them out. <clears throat> However, the reality of my life is that it, it I'm stressed when I go out in public. I have anxiety, and it freaks me out a lot. Um, it freaks me out a lot to go out in public, like more than normal people. And sometimes I forget that, and then I see normal people doing their thing, and I'm like, oh, shit, like... That's, that's how, it's weird. Anyway, um, so I fucking love delivery because they bring it right to you and you don't have to go out and you don't have to like, I don't own a car so I have to take public transit and you don't have to see anyone and you have to walk anywhere and you don't take public transit back. And I, okay, so the daily double part is from Family Trees Earl. Um, someone on Twitter, I think it's Obtuse Metal, really, really nice commenter on Twitter. I'm pretty sure that's your screen name. I don't know if you watch the Stony Sunday episodes, if you are, but I really appreciate your comments on Twitter. You're a really awesome person. Anyway, he, she, they asked um, if my anxiety has been, like, better lately or, like, what's up with it. And so I was like, yeah, it kind of has been better. I've been doing okay. But I, it, that question, like, stood out in my mind and I've been thinking about, like, am I doing better? Am I not doing better? I'm not really doing better entirely. Like, I experience less anxiety when I go out because I'm going out to events where I know people are friendly and that they like me and that I am going to have fun. Like I'm going to places where I'm invited and my friends are waiting and then it's awesome and that's a good time and I have fun. I don't have anxiety in those situations. I hate the times where like I'm just, like, if I have to go from my house to spot X in the city and then do something and then come back. The hour from here to that spot and back, that is when I'm, like, walking with, like, my, sh I swear, my shoulders are, like, literally up. I have, like, goosebumps just thinking about it. And I'm just waiting for someone to, like, say something to me so that I can be like, well, ah, don't talk to me because I don't want to be talking. Like, I get really nervous and really uncomfortable. And that part has actually gotten worse for me because of the blog. And I love my site. I love my job. So I'm not trying to complain about it. I'm trying to just keep you guys updated with the realities of my life and what's going on. I hope you guys know it's like can see that difference but like feeling that way going outside I could always tell myself like no one talks to you no one cares like you, it's all in your head chill the fuck out and just go and power through it and it'd be okay but more and more often I will do that and then people do come and talk to me and someone will say like hey I like your videos or like hey you're that girl from Instagram and like that is very kind and I really appreciate it. I definitely encourage you guys to say hi because I shouldn't be this shy and nervous. Like, I want to be braver and I want to be less awkward and weird so don't stop doing this but it also freaks me out a lot so I know it's a very weird position to put you guys in. I'm sorry it's a weird position to be in you know it's just what it is but that has freaked me out a little bit more because it's like the risk is higher now when I go out somewhere from here to the city a lot of people smoke weed and have the internet around here and a lot of yeah there's a lot of people say hi so it freaks me out sometimes it's awesome and that is kind of why I end up going for delivery because going to a dispensary only ups the chances that I'm going to meet someone that says that like follows my stuff which is awesome and that's a good thing 
But if I don't meet them and they just like stare at me from afar and then later are like, I saw you at this place but I didn't say hi, that freaks me out so much and I don't want those opportunities to happen. If you see me, do say hi so I at least know what's going on and I'm like, oh shit, there's people here and it kind of helps me understand like where you all are and what's going on in the world. But it creeps me out a lot when I just get messages later they're like, I didn't want to say hi but I was just staring at you or I just saw you at the counter. Like, that is weird. So that freaks me out, gives me anxiety. That was your daily tumble twofer. Obviously we're going to need to smoke some pot. Let's just take a dab after that one. Um, yeah, my anxiety has gotten better but also worse. And it's never something that I try to like control my life. There are people that say because I have anxiety I don't do this, because I have anxiety I don't do this. Fuck that. I'll say because I have anxiety it was horrible or I was miserable, but I still try to show up. I have started doing that when I was 18, I am 26 now, and I am super thankful for every single day and night that I made myself actually get out of the house and go and do something, even when they were awkward and weird and terrible. I'm glad that I did it because it made me a little stronger for today. The Nectar Collector people were at the party last night. <coughs> Everyone was there. <coughs> it was awesome. <coughs> okay. <coughs> that was a, a pretty big ramble, I think. I think. Next random question is Carly Marie asking if I've ever gotten sick off of a bong rip. Yes, and I'm answering this question for a particular friend who got sick very recently from bong hits, stabs, edibles, a combination of stoniness. They got sick and they are older, a little tiny bit older than I am and they were like, this has never happened to me before. And I didn't want to like say it a million times to them, but I probably did, but I was like, this happens to every serious stoner. Every single stoner that smokes by themselves or smokes a lot or like really fucks with weed, you know what I mean? It's happened to them. <coughs> My scariest time, I was like, I didn't throw up off a bong This was just for me too high. I have thrown up off bong hits. I've thrown up off bong hits. I've thrown up off dabs. I've thrown up so many times, so many ways. But one time I was way too high and I was on the beach. And the beach is in Santa Cruz. Sometimes there's like a cliff overlooking and then you're lying on the beach and then cliff beach. So I'm lying on the beach. On the top of the cliff there's all these eucalyptus trees. What's up Australia? We're twins. We have eucalyptus trees too. Um, there was this dude climbing a eucalyptus tree unbeknownst to me getting high as fuck on the beach. So I get high as fuck. I lay down, pass out on my towel. I have sunscreen on because I'm super pale. I know how to do this. And I wake up like tripping balls so high. Like I'm not, I just wake up like, oh my god, I hope the tide doesn't come in because I am not moving. I'm, this is, this is it. I'm staying on this towel for the duration and we'll see what happens. And then from laying in the towel on the towel, I look up and I see someone in the trees and I like lose my shit. I'm like crying, laughing, like why is he in the trees? What if he falls out? He's on the cliff, on the tree, over the beach. Like it was so panic inducing to be that high and to see this going on. It was horrible. So I've been there. I had to talk myself down. I had to just stay on the beach, close my eyes, go to sleep. I had to just trust that man knew what he was doing and that it wasn't my job or responsibility. I couldn't do anything. I was so, I was so high. I just had to stay there. And by the way, I think that guy was totally fine. If I remember correctly, he was like trimming the tree and he had like orange vest on and everything. But at the time, it seemed very risky. So other times I remember the biggest bong I hit in high school, like way, way back in the day because I'm so old now, but I was in the back of my friend's car and they were older. They were like seniors and I must have been a junior or something. And I like, they, front seat, passenger seat, and I sat in the back right in the middle because that is a stupid place to sit. It just seemed awesome for the smoke sesh, I guess. So I sat right in the middle and they handed me this bong 
and I took this like fat bong hit and it was the biggest bong hit I ever took in high school and everyone was like whoa that was awesome I didn't know you could do that and I was like I didn't know I could do that either and then like 30 seconds after I blew out the smoke I was like open your door and someone next to me had to open the door and I threw up like over their lap outside the car so that was very cute it was probably my peak of cuteness right there it was gross we were up in the woods like in a remote spot so then you just have like puke breath in the yeah I honestly don't remember smoking with that group of people ever again after that incident I'm like maybe we smoked again after no I don't think we did I don't think I was ever invited to smoke with them ever again but it happens to everyone that was rude of them I will definitely invite my friend that got sick all the time because it happens to everyone we all get high or too high every now and then but your body doesn't do anything harmful if you get too high you can't actually hurt yourself you'll either throw up if you get a little dizzy and you feel sick or your stomach isn't settling well with an edible or something or you'll just fall asleep not in a dangerous way like pass out driving but just like instead of go out you might go into your bed and go to sleep so too high is still not risky high it's just like uncomfortably high the next question is pretty irrelevant if you've watched this channel before and it's do you dab have you ever dabbed would you dab if you could dab what's up with dabs where you are dab scenes popping in california um it's it's thriving out here we got shatter we got wax we got co2 we got pho putane putane propane putane <laughs> propane hash oil putane is so good um but yeah we have a lot of different options out here so dabs are just doing their thing let's see in the dish i have some shatta on her face i love it's like shatter on her face oh, it's so funny personally that's what i laugh about um but i love it Dab seems thriving. I was scared to dab. The first time I dabbed, I asked the people introducing me to dabs if they did other drugs too, because this was really scary. I was like, do you guys like also do hard drugs and this is normal to you? Because this seems really freaky to me with the torch. And they were like, no, and that's kind of a rude question. <laughs> like, they were really nice about it and they're good friends of mine, but they were like, that's not what we're doing. We're just doing weed. That's all we're into. And I was like, okay, word. Because me too. And they're a little freaky. The concentrates, you know? Like, yeah. It's a little intimidating when you first see them and you got to figure out the blowtorch situation. Now I keep a torch handy. I am ready. That thing's self-defense and self-stoniness, if I had to say. We have over 100 viewers, by the way. We have maintained over 100 viewers for this Stony Sunday ramble. Thank you and happy Stony Sunday to you all. My hair is wet. I rushed through here. I had to get onto the show at like 11.10 instead of on time. But definitely love doing the live episodes. And I've toyed with you guys in the past that I really want to do the live ones regularly. And I'm still, I'm going to tease you guys about that again. I really want to do them regularly. I want to invest. It's like a hundred and something dollars to get the really sweet webcam. So it would be like HD, great quality, and you guys can see the nugs when I show you the nugs, you'd be like, oh my god, they're so frosty. You can kind of see them, and my terrible need for a manicure. Um, but yeah, I want to get that webcam, and then also I'd want to invest the like $100 a month to do ad free for all of you guys, which I think you guys are interested in. And I don't currently have that money, like, ready to go and guaranteed $100 a month. That's a lot of money. $100 a month? I could have another iPhone for that. But I love the live stream. So anyway, thinking about it, want to do it, definitely going to do it. And one way you can show support is so tacky and cheesy. But the Sony Sunday shirts, the black ones are on sale right now. And that money helps me do the show. Bovida also helps me do the show. Bovida do. So, we're going to try and do that. It's going to be awesome. The black shirt orders end tonight at midnight. If you're watching this on Sunday, tonight at midnight Pacific Standard Time, use Google for wherever you are. Time zones are amazing. Um, the black shirt orders end, and that will be the last chance to get them before the holidays, because then I need to get them in here, and I have to send them back out, and goodie bag, pack up, and all of that. And then the limited edition shirts, if you ordered one, if you've been waiting for one, I should have those to me next weekend. Knock on wood, every time I announce something on Stony Sunday, I get jinx it. <sighs> Knocking on wood. I should have them here before, or like around next weekend, maybe. And then, 
excuse me, packed up and shipped to you as soon as possible. I have the envelopes and goodie bags ready. My assistant did a million goodie bags. What up? Hi, buddy. Thank you. And those goodie bags are freaking ready for the shirts to come in and fold and be sent out. There were the black shirts with pink writing, white shirts with black writing for you to tie-dye, and red stony holiday, stony holiday shirts that are coming in. Only 50 of each shirt were made. I'm pretty sure I did that right. I feel like I fucked up. Pretty sure though. Yeah, 50 of each shirt were made. So I sold almost all of them pre-orders, but there will be a few, a tiny few available, all three of those designs, the holiday, the black, and the white. Once those are finally in my hands, I'll have them on Etsy and then the shirt stuff money goes to the live episodes and the webcam and I'm pretty sure there's a Ben Wilson in Michigan. I was trying to think of like where other reefers have these. I'm pretty sure there's one in Michigan. I like it. I like it. Um, was there another? Oh yeah, there's more questions, of course. Of course. How weird. In the live stream, some people are saying they haven't seen ads, and other people are saying they do. I know a lot of people do, and it ruins ruins the episode for them. Um, but yeah, let me know if you if you experience the ad problem or the no ad problem. This is super trippy that like my hair is drying right in front of my eyes and like it's it's whatever. Never just stared at my own hair as it air dries is what I'm getting at. I don't know if anyone ever has, but it happens. Uh, uh. Stoned Drew asked if I've ever tried salvia. I have tried it, and I didn't really enjoy it that much. It was kind of weird. It was like a visually confusing experience, and it wasn't like my favorite. I wasn't a huge fan, but I did. I tried it. I legally, like, you, well, my friend bought it, but it's crazy that you can just buy it in the store, and weed's still illegal. What the fuck? Doesn't make any sense at all. Oh my gosh. T. Schmay, Schmay, Schmay. 420 asked, What relative would I get high if I could? Well, Taden. I feel like a lot of you already know. Do you guys already know? I would get my mom high. Not even like in a messed up way. I would just have her use cannabis. She's a two-time cancer survivor. Knock on all wood possible over here, over there. Um, this November, it is November right now. What am I talking about? This like the 26th or the 28th or something around Thanksgiving. This November is the five-year anniversary of the last time my mom had cancer. So that's very exciting. If you know with cancer, like the five-year mark is a big deal. It's a big deal to me personally, because I, I like, I don't know, my mom having cancer was a horrible experience. Um, she had cancer before that, but I hadn't been born yet, so I didn't have to experience any of that. So when she got it again in a totally different type, I was not prepared. I was like, you already beat this. What the fuck? <coughs> anyway, I think it could really help her. I think it could really benefit her life. She's also getting a little bit older. She's a pretty young mom, but I mean, she's getting older as moms do. And I really know that cannabis can help prevent a lot of age-related illnesses as well. So I am on her like all the time just about seeking information and new things that come out, new products, that type of thing. But she is not really that receptive to it with the huge difference between a recommendation and a doctor's prescription. That is a legal difference and it's kind of a big deal. So. That's where my mom stands on it. She's all for information, but she hasn't consumed it with me. And I'm actually going to hang out with her after this episode ends. We're going to go for like another 10 minutes because I was 10 minutes late. Um, but yeah, if we can just like talk about it more, maybe get in, like Maddie Matt Mason just said, into an evaluation center so she can at least have her own doctor's recommendation and she could at least, you know, go into a dispensary and really check them out and kind of get a feel for not every patient is like me. Like, she sees my glass and me talking so much, and, like, she probably is like, this isn't for me, this isn't the right 
drug or the right medicine for me, but there are other cannabis patients out there. There are other people that she might be able to relate to a little bit more, and I'm hoping that we're going to, like, meet those people. Yeah. If you're, like, a Santa Cruz business professional who casually uses cannabis for medicine, contact me. I, or like seriously uses it for medicine, but I mean like my mom knows a lot of hippies and like a lot of like super hippie people and I think that's what steered her away from cannabis is that she's a little more, I don't know, clinical in lifestyle. Does that even make sense? But I think she needs friends that she can relate to the love bot. Because, I mean, your daughter can only tell you so much before you're, like, piped down. The bottom line that I've had to accept was on my lips. Um, yeah. Yeah. People are saying, I'm like reading some of the live stream comments, and they're, like, trying to share that chemo is bad is new information. Chemo is very, very painful. It's a, it's a pretty horrible experience for people that have cancer. My mother, thankfully, did not experience chemo with her latest, her latest bout with cancer. Um, she had her kidney removed, chopped out of her. Yoink. Um, they, I think. Wait, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. I think it was this kidney. This kidney. This kidney. I don't remember. This kidney, maybe. They took one of her kidneys out. She didn't have to have chemo, but she took these, like, chemo radiation pills afterwards that, like, supposedly helped prevent it from gr growing back, which cannabis could have as well. Um, but she did go through chemo. I'm just going to share my mom's life story. She went through chemo when she was a child. She was only, like, 10, 11, 12 years old when she first had cancer. And I feel like went away and came back then when she was younger. I think she had when she was, like, 9 and 10 and then came back when she was 12, 13, something like that. Um chemo when she was younger she actually like she lost all her hair and she has always spoken very positively of the experiences like I mean she had a horrible time she was in pain she was very sick but she's like kept such a positive attitude and she always told me the coolest thing about like shaving your head is then you can put on any wig at any time and you can be a totally different person so she like would always say that she got to kind of go through puberty and like become a young woman Sometimes being a redhead and sometimes being a brunette and sometimes being a blonde and that is awesome and super fun and like way to go mom for finding the positive side. That's totally her style. Um, yeah, it's cool. And then there's also pictures of her in like warm little hats because she's adorable and she had short hair. She's so cute. I love my mom. If you guys haven't checked it out, Ivon, Ivon Kawai, Ivon Kawai just said that she or he watched the Mother's Day episodes recently and if you guys haven't definitely go check them out those have been some of my favorite Stony Sundays to either film or be a part of when I've been involved with them um it's really really nice and my mom volunteers her time during Mother's Day season and she looks forward to it now I know she's already expecting to next year by the way like I already know it's on her calendar and it's our tradition it's our family tradition now she's on Stony Sunday for a Mother's Day Sunday and it's a great opportunity for you guys to ask questions that, I don't know, you otherwise maybe wouldn't ask your mom. She's a cool mom. She can answer some stuff. And she's not a cannabis user or a drinker. So she is someone that's a little more conservative in that way and may have a different perspective than me. You know what I mean? Yeah. She mentioned some Oakland restaurant that she's going to go to today with me. We're going to some Oakland restaurant. I'm not going to tell you where it is because it's a live episode. And then you could be there and be like, well, that's trippy. Um, but we already talked about that. If you are there, say hi. I'm still looking forward to going to this weird Oakland restaurant. And I'm really looking forward to the fact that my mom picked out a new spot because we both fall into habits so hard. And we just go to the same restaurants over and over and over. And now I'm like, oh, shit, she's got a new spot. What is this? Let's find out. Let's see what it's about. Dry my hair a little bit more. <clears throat> Cheers. It is cherry. I had to go for it. Oh, it tastes so good. I'm smoking Skywalker OG. It smells amazing. The jar is just open sitting here, like wafting up to me. 
and it tastes like almost sweet not sugary sweet but almost like winter freshy sweet like I don't know I'm horrible with taste describing things if you haven't noticed by now but this is why we need that much better webcam edition thing but this is these are some nugs these look good you guys can see it the Skywalker ah. Tuck that back into there. Ah, I'm dropping everything. Okay. One more question from Stony Sunday 200. And then I think I'll take three more questions from the live stream. So ask your question if you haven't yet, because there's only so much time. We have left like five and a half minutes plus ten seconds. The last question from Stony Sunday 200 slash Stony Sunday 208 was, do you get the munchies? Yes, but no. When I first started smoking weed, I gained like 10 pounds because I was eating Ho-Ho's and a milkshake all the time. All the time, like every day. Like legitimately getting a pack of Ho-Ho's, getting a milkshake, considering that a meal. Not good, not good at all. I once I realized that, like, oh, hey, you're doing a really dumb thing, please stop, I would start just getting, like, you know, less caloric snacks. I don't know why I'm using that word. I'd get better snacks. I would just skip a snack and have water or drink soda is honestly what I do a lot of. Um, but I just tried to maintain my lifestyle whether or not I was smoking. And also, I always know that you're stronger than the munchies. You are way stronger than the munchies. As hungry as you might feel, take another bong hit and see if you forget about being hungry and just chill. That's definitely been a huge part of my munchy, no munchy experience. But I have also changed my lifestyle and then I sold my car like four or five years ago. It feels like forever ago now. And so I walk a lot. Just to get to Bart, I'm walking nearly a mile, I think. And I love it. I have a more healthy lifestyle just by having a more active lifestyle. Even if I'm still drinking Pepsi, which I'm going to have some of right now. I have a more healthy lifestyle because I am being active. I should change my diet probably. But definitely keeps the munchies at bay to just try and be consistent and not let yourself binge one night. Because then the next night you're going to want more and then it's going to become a habit. And every night you're going to be thinking that's what you do at night. You get high and you eat all this stuff. Don't make that your habit. Don't do it. Related to munchies, I need them to eat. I don't recognize hunger as an emotion. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know. It's frustrating because if you don't eat, you don't get energy. Food is fuel, as they say. And if you're not getting hungry, you're just getting more and more tired until you're just laying on the couch like, oh, I'm so tired. Everything's so hard. And it's like, no, you're just fucking hungry. Eat a sandwich and go for a jog and you'll have tons of energy. So that's what weed helps me do. It helps me get hungry, eat a little bit of food, go outside, less anxious, more hungry, more energy, get out there, get active, and get healthier. I love the munchies. Try not to let them ruin my life. I totally get them, but don't let them ruin your life, you guys. You are stronger than the munchies. Stronger than the munchies. Just say it to yourself. <gasps> Maddie Matt Mason asked if I have a favorite drink from Jamba Juice. I need to go back there. I love peach stuff, peach drink stuff. So anything that's like I don't go there often enough to have a favorite. Oh shit, that's one of the last three questions. Oh man, one of the last three questions. I don't go there often enough to have a favorite order. I go and I'll be really high and I'll just be like, hmm, looks good. Look, peach shit, that's the one I want. So it like just jumps out at me and then I have to have it. Two more questions. One more reminder about the Aqualab sale. They totally did not sponsor this episode. They did not even mention for me to mention it to you guys. But I'm trying to look out for you and save you some money. On that note, the Vape Exhale has a starter package for $500 right now. And I'm pretty sure the World Reefers discount does still get you 10% off with that one. Pretty sure. 
pretty sure. So $450 or $500 could get you the vape exhale and the adapters. You can use it with any rig possible. Go check that out to save some money, right? Yeah, spend some money. Mm -hmm. Get vaping, vape exhale. I should use that next week on Sony Sunday because it's awesome and I use it all the time. And I always forget because I keep it on my desk because that's where I use it. So then people come over and it's not like on the table where all the guests are. And I'm like, oh shit, let me get you the good stuff It's over here. My secret stash. Um, two more questions. Side bonus question. I saw Jay Rainson had just asked where I got this piece. They had missed earlier my mention. Yeah, it's from Aqualab. It's a Ben Wilson triple donut in line. And I have dubbed it the unofficial World Reefer piece because I know that they are in the hands of a few World Reefers. And if I know of a few, that means there's even more that I don't know. So unofficial World Reefer piece. Get it on Aqualab. I don't know if they're sold out or not. Mm, sorry, I'm not really sure. But get it on Aqualab during their sale. And it should be less than $250 for this exact same one. Or somewhere around there for the colored ones. More than that. Something like that. That wasn't a question though. Still two more questions. I'm going to tell you guys something. I'm home alone by myself a lot. I have the internet. I'm cruising. I tried things. I looked at the internet. I've seen some stuff. Everyone knows what twerking is. Anyway, internet, I have to confess to you, I've learned how to twerk. No reason whatsoever. Will not post a twerking video. I just started dancing and was like, yeah, when this is over, I'm going to probably turn on, turn on some music and get dancing and twerking. Because, like, I don't know why I didn't even try it until 2014. Didn't this come out like 10 years ago? I don't know. Anyway, internet confession. If you haven't tried it because you're embarrassed and you think it's dumb and you don't want to try it, but you kind of do want to try it because it looks ridiculous and fun at the same time and you like moving your body, try it. It's silly and fun. And if you have someone that likes looking at your butt, they're going to like it too. I don't have a home butt looker. That sounded weird. That sounded like something else. So anyway, weird. Latino Heat has asked one of the next questions of the two, which gets us to one more question. But Latino Heat's question is, do I have any insider info on when Bovida will be putting 55 packs up for sale? The 55%, yeah, this side. 55% humidity control packets. Can I get three Bovida? Let's see if I can do this. Dun, 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 dun. Mm, mm. Mmm, Bovida! This is the actual packet that you use. This one is 62%, and the 55% I tried out recently, I love it. It's a little bit more dry, so the weed is like, it's a little more crumbly in your fingertips when you pick it up and you're ready than like the 65 or the 69, even the 62. Insider info for release. I don't have any specific dates, but I do know that it's coming, that it's going to also be in the goodie bags that I release as well. So my goodie bags kind of fluctuate what percent I have. I get the samples from Bovida, so it's really what's available and ready. Is I need 600 bags, stat, they rush over what they have available. Sometimes 62, sometimes 65. I have asked and requested that the next shipment or two shipments or whatever we're gonna do, the next near foreseeable future is 55%. So yes, that is something that is awesome that we're going to do. I love it. I don't want to say the wrong date because I don't know. Let me just brush my hair in front of you guys. Let me just play mermaid. Awesome mermaid -y. Um, But back to that question. I don't want to say the wrong date. I don't know what goes on like in the company company. I just know that they are awesome. They have definitely said that I can have 55% ones. And Bovida has offered me Bovida for life. So that is not something I would walk away from. Because I use these in every jar every time. So I'm going to use my Bovida for life. I don't know if you guys remember offering me that. But I remember. I want all the packs. All the time. One more question. For this Stony Sunday Live. I want to say ramble edition. I always ramble. But I feel like I'm like hyped up for this one. Hyped. Hyped edition Stony Sunday Live. One more question. I'll cruise. I will fucking cruise. 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 Uh, John AB7, not a question, but John AB7 looked up the rig. 
got the discount $212.50 for this rig right here. $212.50, typically $250. Bam, bam, bam. And I mentioned earlier that it's one of the only pieces I have that I honestly love it for flower and dab, like the same. I use it pretty evenly for both of those. Today I was like, let's do some flower in it. But I use it for both. Recently I went and spent a night in San Francisco for Halloween. It was so exciting. It was fun. Oh, so fun. Um, but I brought this rig with me because I switched between. I didn't even want to post on the internet because it's kind of like weird and Instagram goes crazy and blah, blah, blah. But I did switch in between flower and concentrate on the same rig on the same day with the same water and I lived to tell it. It was crazy. And this rig was that rig. And it hit great for both of those. <clears throat> Let me cough right before I take another bong hit because obviously I'm ready for another bong hit. There's still one more question though. What will that last question be? Or can I really ramble forever? <coughs> I see it. I see the last question of this week. I like to pick questions from the internet that I also get in person because I feel like that matters for no reason whatsoever. But I do. I pick those questions. So, Family Trees Earl asked what's the most number of dabs that I have done back to back and last night at this crazy party that I was at someone asked how many dabs do I do a day whoa I think the most that I've done back to back in like recent memory is like five like I was trying to get a picture and the picture just kept not turning out I'm so in love with my job and if I have to keep dabbing for the picture I will so five dabs in I got the shot I wanted I didn't want to tell you what shot it was because then you're like it wasn't worth it trust me whatever took five dabs to get this shot said earlier in the episode I don't smoke to smoke I'll smoke for the shot though I'll fucking do that um cross my arms about it um but yeah five dabs back to back to back and I totally felt like that was a little bit too much Probably wish I could have stopped at two or three, but I needed this picture. I needed to get it done. Um, the person that asked last night, they're like, "How much do? You, how many dabs could you do in a day?" I told them this. Maybe no, I didn't tell them this. This is what I thought to myself as they continued talking. Sometimes I don't talk that much in public. I'm shy. Um, on my birthday, I like to take it. I don't know why I'm like. Oh. Um, on my birthday, I tried to take as many dabs as years old that I am, and that was when I realized that I generally don't count my dabs, because I did it on my 25th birthday, and I ended up taking like 27 dabs total, because so I was like, I'm not done at 25, I want two more dabs, and then for 26, I did 26 dabs, and it was kind of like the same thing, I was like, alright, apparently I can do 26 dabs in a day, no biggie, it was high as fuck, but it wasn't like day ruining you know what I mean you know the difference um yeah so that's the last question for this week's stony sunday hella dabs I'm gonna take a bong hit and then a dab and I should film the news nug update let's do it let's film the news nug update live I'll stop the recording of stony sunday so this video will end and then I'll flip the camera around change the backdrop and we'll do the news nug live but it won't go on YouTube until Monday. Are you guys ready for this like behind the scenes shit? If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see Stony Sunday now and News Nug on Monday. Thank you for watching Stony Sunday. Next week is episode 210. Bovida and I will be there. Submit your questions, stonysunday.com slash askstonysunday. And be sure you are following on Instagram and Twitter and 
fuck you, Facebook. That's it. I'm out for Stony Sunday. Stay high, you guys.